we leave our beloved Prangarup and begin making our way towards Perth, traveling through the beautiful southwest of WA with our first stop in Denmark. So here we are, finally, what, six days after the Prangarup slash Albany stay, which kind of happened by accident. Like I just kind of looked at wiki camps and looked at a place that was, you know, 30, 40 k's away from where we were. Saw Paronga up, saw there's a few wineries around, so we we stayed there, and we found this absolute gem of a caravan park. Just an awesome place, lovely owners. And now we're finally leaving the area, or trying to leave the area, because as, a, as it turns out, there's a massive bushfire that's burning near Walpole, Actually, which is our destination. In hindsight, it's good that we went to Paronga up, otherwise we would have been in Walpole for the bushfires. Yeah, actually a good point. We probably would have had to flee that area because we would have kind of been there in those sequence of events. So a lot of happy accidents in this part of Western Australia. Unreal. I think it's the best part of Australia yet. And there might be a bajillion best areas, but it feels like, I don't know, it feels like home. I don't know how else to describe it. Yeah, it's just... It feels like a homecoming. Yeah, it's really beautiful. And in how's this free camp? Let's check this out. About 10 k's out of Denmark in like kind of really the only free camp that's anywhere near Denmark. And it's uh, wicked, really cool. So we'll see what tomorrow brings. I reckon we're gonna just, um, yeah, have a little mosey on around Denmark itself and basically just see how the fire situation goes because we'd love to do the Valley of the Giants treetop walk. Closed, bushfires. The fires are burning, I only think, a couple of kilometres away from that area. So, yeah, fingers crossed everything's all right. We'll see how we go. to check out Green's Pool. And the famous elephant rocks. Nah, just kidding. This is shameless footage of us in South Africa with the real deal. Here are the elephant rocks. Not as impressive, but few things are. We are at Green's Pool outside of Denmark. Again, don't quite understand the naming of places in Australia. Um, beautiful spot and everything. And the first thing this dude decides to do, pick leaves and blow it. There's this shrub here that we haven't seen before and it has these long, skinny, soft leaves that are perfect for doing this. My grandfather taught me how to do this. So you, you kind of make it, it's almost like a reed of a wind instrument, like a saxophone. So you pull it between your thumbs. <laughs> Doesn't, whoops. Let's edit that out. These are the things I tolerate traveling, like hey. We spent a couple days in and around Denmark, a great little town. Bushfires did indeed subside, so we could travel further west into the Valley of the Giants near Walpole. Just driving through this part of the country is amazing and walking among the top of the trees, nearly 100 metres off the ground, is just mind-blowing.
continued through the southwest, staying at a few campgrounds, trying some wine and exploring the area. It's been something of an impromptu night at this caravan park. Um, I can't even tell you where it is. It's um, somewhere between Manjimup and Nanup. I think that's how you pronounce them. Because uh, we wanted to go to a free camp and um, there was a guy with a bus there and his bus basically took up the entire campsite. So we came here instead. Check this out. We've woken up in a cloud and the birds are around here. The birds last yesterday evening were amazing. Anthony has a... Yeah. <laughs> it's like a miniature mandarin, like, smells beautiful, looks ripe, proper tiny, look at her, look how cute she <laughs> is! Proper tiny, tiny mandarin. How cool. <laughs> I just want to eat it, but I don't want to get sick. Yeah, we had an smells unfortunate incident beautiful. in Cape Town where he learned the, learned the hard way. Um, yeah, I ate a, um, what was it, a, um... Peach or a nectarine, nectarine yeah. Yeah, and I was pretty sick for about 24 hours. Because you also discovered, like, half a worm in it. Yeah, it was it had a, had a parasite in it or something, yeah. Anyways. These, oh my gosh. <laughs> What's the harm? How bad could it be is what I said last time, and then I was in the loo for two days. And then the weather that we had luckily avoided for the entire journey so far had finally caught up with us with a vengeance. It is pouring down rain outside. I think I just saw a lightning bolt. Um, we are in Cary Valley, just outside of Pemberton. I am ill. <laughs> We're both wet. And just hopped in the car for some reprieve. Um, we just walked down to the car and it was barely, it was barely spitting at all and we're putting stuff away and then... <laughs> yeah. This sucks and this is so very realistic so we're gonna wait here for a minute. is um, traveling Australia. <laughs> We've had rain every day and every night for the past week, eight or nine days. Yeah. It's really starting to get on my tits. <laughs> and we're both sick oh, as well. My back's getting wet. Yeah, it has. <laughs> Because you don't have the time to dry. Like one or two days of rain, fine. Doesn't matter how wet it gets. If a few dry days afterwards, everything goes dry again. But when it's wet, 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 everything is starting to decay and rot and stink. Because Much nothing like gets, our nothing immune gets, systems. Nothing is dry. Everything is wet for days and days and days. I'm getting wet. My back's getting wet. Let me Oh, it's going down my wrist. <laughs> Next week, we check out the city of Perth. 
run into some issues with the car. This is what the government of WA wanted us to do in order to pass a safety inspection. And explore the beautiful Rottnest Island. Thanks for watching. Thank you.